Good evening, everybody. My name is Deacon Derek Walcott, and we are having conversations with our shepherd, Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon. And we are in the, yeah, we are in the middle of Lent, you know, and, you know, Lent is always about a time to pray and fast and give alms. So we want to welcome the shepherd as he has this conversation with us. And the theme of his conversation is a time to pray and fast for the nation. So good evening, Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon. How are you? I'm doing really well, you know. You do it. Reverend Deacon. Yeah. It's Lent. It is Lent. Lent. You know that Lent is really an exciting, exciting time. Right? You know that. Well, hey, we had a show. Get excited. Get excited. Oh, but you know the Lent is exciting. And this Lent more exciting than anyone I've had before. So it's Lent. It's exciting. So let's rock and roll. Let's rock and roll. Well, normally the Archbishop says this. But I'm going to let you all guys. I'm going to say it this time. Buckle up. Just buckle up. So I see that, um, you know, the whole nation is looking at a special day of prayer and fasting during Lent. Why? Well, I want you to consider our world and what's happening in the world right now. Consider the, the fragility of peace that we're facing. Consider the, the one small misstep and where our world could be plunged in, in a very, very short time. Just consider that. And that's just one part of the world. There are many other parts of the world where, where we have significant challenge. Then consider the nation and the number of people who are without jobs, the number of people who have no way forward, who have no hope, who, who have no, no, no way to see tomorrow going in a way that makes sense for them. And, and consider the kind of boiling pot that this nation is right now. The anger, the, the, the acrimony, the, 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 the sense, the short fuse that we, that we have, the rising crime that we have, all the many problems that we're facing. Just, just consider that for a moment. And if that's not enough for you, I want you to consider your family. The challenges that you're seeing in your family right now, the children, the grandchildren, the, the grandparents, the, cons, consider the, the, the way that the family is evolving and, and whether that is in a way in a direction that is towards harmony and kingdom and God and, or, or away from it. Just consider those for a moment. Well, and, you know, and when you've done that, then consider your own life. Are you where you want to be? Are you where God wants you to be? Are you in, in sync with, with God's rhythm for your life? When you've considered all of those, ask me now the question. What was the question again? But hold on, hold on. I think you said it, you know, the boiling pot. I think all trainees could identify, all people in the world could identify with the boiling pot. The boiling pot. And, and yes, I, I, I have to agree. We are in a boiling pot. The whole world is in a boiling pot. What was the question? Yeah. My medical question. Why pray and fast for the nation? Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I, I, wasn't sure, I, I wasn't sure I got the question right. Yeah, but as you, as, you, as you reminded me, we are in a boiling pot. I had to reconsider. That's, not a, that's a rhetorical question. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. I was just checking. You see, we're living in a perfect harmony. Are we living in perfect harmony with the divine right now? I think, I think we could say we're in the opposite. And, and if we're not living in perfect harmony with the divine, we need prayer and fasting and almsgiving as three ways of moving the spiritual needle to the right direction. These, these are the three basic tools in the discipleship toolkit. And you know, we on to discipleship and we on to missionary discipleship and prayer, fasting and almsgiving are, are vital in the discipleship toolkit. And so if we see in, we have a time for prayer, fasting and almsgiving is because we really need it. We, we absolutely need it. And we need to see how deeply we actually need it. 
Oh boy, I, you know, we look at, our, you, you, you mentioned so many things there. You mentioned about what's happening with the Ukraine and um, that we are on the, we could be on the brink of a nuclear war. You, you, you spoke about, yes, this pandemic and how many people we've lost some icons, you know, because of COVID. We've talked about, you know, um, a lot of people without jobs and how are they taking care of their families? We All talk right. about the stress that has that that has on relationships, and then we have a whole political kind of boiling pot that is taking place even in our nation. Yes, yeah. yes. We need we need prayer fasting and almsgiving. We we become a very complacent kind of people, and we've been we've been very happy with a life of comfort and a life of luxury, and and well, this is a different time. And I think, I think, you know, it, it should be our joy to be able to, to offer the sacrifice of prayer and fasting back to God. That should be our joy. But, you know, they, but Lent for us Catholics has always been that time of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Correct. You know, um, but, you know, I, I, I had a little meeting with some, with some teachers you know, and I, 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 I challenge them, you know, I said, are you, all, are you all guiding your own students into this whole, you know, these three disciplines of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving? And they can do it, even as, as young to run in SEA class, they can learn these good spiritual habits. And we, and we should teach them. Correct. We should be teaching the children as young as they are. And, and you know, it's amazing that we, we also have synod. We have these synod conversations at also at this time. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So I challenge them. I said, have you all been having a conversation with your SEA students on synod? Because, you know, Holy Father, Archbishop G said, hey, we need to hear everybody's voice. Everybody. In. Everybody. Everybody's in. voice. Mm -hmm. And, and so, so I guess this time for prayer fasting and uh, prayer and fast for the nation and is also, listening. Is listening, and it's also that we we dispose ourselves towards God's action in our world today, and put ourselves in the place of of what God wants, and make ourselves available to God for what God really is asking of us, and 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 doing with and through us. That that's that's the real the real thing. But, but prayer, fasting, and almsgiving are the most important practices we need to cultivate as habits. If we have them as habits in our life, then our connection with God remains in a particular kind of way. If they're not habits in our life, then we kind of come and go in our connection with God. Coming and going bubbling in our pot <laughs> coming and going with right. god and we are in a boiling pot i like i like those things that you're saying in terms of that you know and you, you spoke to us we, we we talked about a time to pray and fast for the nation and i saw in your article you said all major religions have prayer and fasting as part of their religious practice now that, that's 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 an interesting thing but it, 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 it is, um, you know, one of the things we have in common, us Muslims, Hindus, Baha'is, um, Orisha, spiritual Baptists, we, we all have traditions around prayer and fasting. And I, and I think in, in some ways, we Catholics have lapsed a little in our prayer and fasting and our almsgiving. And, and kind of Lent comes and we, we, we know it's Lent, but we continue on with everything else we're doing. And, and it, is, it is in that, that commitment of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving that, that we reconnect ourselves again with the heart of our tradition. You know, we live in a world with such excess, material possessions, food, pleasure, stimulation of all kinds. When the world veers to excess, we need to regain balance through our religious practice and our daily habits. 
And that's why I'm, I'm asking people this year to really take on the, the prayer fasting and the alms giving in a, in a serious way this Lent. And, and let's, let's really commit ourselves to it in, in, as, a, as a real, you know, we only have a little while in Lent still to go. So if, if you fell off the wagon or you didn't have a wagon or you didn't get on the wagon at all, less from, from now, let's really commit at least one day in the week, let's, let's do a day of fasting. Let, let's, let's commit a little extra time in prayer so that our, our life really in this last bit of Lent, we, we, we go to the next place in, in the spiritual disciplines. And, and that's, how, that's how we develop and grow in our religious habits. You know, I remember last year you did, you did a, a talk on the rhythm, the rhythm of the different seasons and how important yes. it is for us to, you know, to, to get into the rhythm. Yes, yes. And so we, 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 we are in this period of prayer, fasting and almsgiving. And, we, we, you know, when people are watching this show, you know, we would be celebrating the Shouter Baptist you know, or would have been just right. after the Shout Shouter Baptist um, holiday and then holiday. liberation and so on. It, important times. Correct. But but also, you know, this this day has a, an ecumenical feel to it. You see the our brothers and sisters from the Islamic tradition, they're going into their strict time of prayer and fast Ramadan in the beginning of April. We are also going to be in Lent. The, the Hindus are also having a, a time of fasting during the same time. And, and what a wonderful thing, you know? So, so could we consciously fast together? So on the 8th, of, the 8th of April, the IRO has agreed to a day of prayer and fasting for all religions in Trinidad and Tobago. And this is one of the, the fruits of our synodal listening process because it was while we were listening with the IRO and, 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 and having a, a really incredible conversation, you know, the suggestion came out and, 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 and all the leaders, you know, automatically said, but that makes so much sense. Because if the Muslims are fasting, the, the Catholics are fasting, the Anglicans are fasting, then, and, and the Hindus going to are fast, well, well, why not us all join with, with this time of prayer and fast and, and have this, this, this time together for, for the nation. And so that's, that's one of the first fruits of, of this in order listening. I love that allowed, that allowed, um, allowed a, a quick agreement and connection and, and, and people saw, yeah, this, this, is, this, is, this is making a lot of sense for us. And that's amazing because, you know, we're all part of this great country of Trinidad and Tobago. And we are so blessed to have so many, you know, different faiths. And, you know, for them to, for you all to come to this, this time of prayer and fasting on the 8th of April, now everybody, and it falls right in line with our Fridays too, our yes. Fridays, which that is, as, as, as Christians, we fast on Fridays. So we have yeah. Now, all the major religions, everybody coming to this day Tut on Bagai. Friday, you know? Tut Bagai. Tut Bagai, Friday, they say. The fe the Friday, the 8th of April. Don't forget the date. It's an important day. Friday, the 8th of April. And the, but the day provides a grace moment for us to unite our hearts in prayer for our nation, for our world, for our families. And, and for us, for us to be drawn closer to Christ and for us to be drawn closer to God, for us to be drawn closer to each other, it really provides a wonderful opportunity. You know, this, I, I think, you know, more than ever, more than ever, we need to unite as people, you know, and, and I'm hearing so many you know, opposing voices. You have so many opposing voices in politics. You have opposing voices in this. You have opposing voices in that. When really and truly the nation and the world at no other time that in my lifetime we needed to be together was now. Absolutely. 
you know, I don't think we've ever faced the kind of threat that we've faced as we're facing right now. The closest would have been the Cuba Missile Crisis. That would have been the closest that we faced where, where there was this great standoff between Russia and, and America directly. And, and the, that was not a prolonged thing. This one, and the longer prolonged threat is, the more fragile it becomes, and the easier it is to have a small misstep that could escalate quickly in the wrong direction. Yeah. And that's why, let's have this time of prayer, fasting, and, and almsgiving. We, we're in this really difficult time. A, th a third world war is, is, is looming. I mean, that, that's, that's very, very possible. And we have to pray no, no, that, that, that we don't go down that, that slippery slope. Nationally, we, we're in a really difficult place between the, the crime, the poverty, the restlessness, the, 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 the unease of the people in the, in the country. We have to see that people are not finding the, the, the way to hope and to hold on because of the severity of, of what they're experiencing right now. So there are all kinds of reasons why, why, we, why we have to hold with each other and draw closer in support of one another. I see you, you quoted the second book of Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14. Mm -hmm. you know, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. It's a beautiful quote, it's a beautiful song also. Huh? Well, boy, the, the, the first word, you, you know, also, if, 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 but, but if, you know, if, if they would only do this, and then you, if, have, the, the, you, you have the whole thing, the, 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 the word, if they would humble themselves, and that's a big challenge, yes, pride, if, pride. If, if. And that, that if is a thing, but, but hear what he says. If my people who are called by name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. And, and we need a healing in this land. We really need a healing in this land. So the if has to lead to the then. Our, our day of prayer and fast will, will be very special this year, you know, because the 8th of, of April is, is significant because our brothers and sisters of the Muslim tradition, are, they're observing their, their holy month of Ramadan at the same time we're observing Lent. So you imagine these two great traditions the two Abrahamic traditions, both fasting on the same time, on the same day. And imagine now reaching out to a Muslim brother or sister, a friend or a family member, and saying, today you're fasting. Say, yes, me too. And, and, and could we be conscious that today we are, we are fasting together in solidarity? And, and then at the end of the day to break the fast. At the end of the day to break the fast together. Meet in one or the other and, and break that fast together. It's, it's interesting, you know, I mean, I, I was just thinking about it because somebody, after reading the article, asked, did they, uh, they wanted to get more information on the IRO. Is it, they come there, what is this IRO? That I'm hearing about. I say you gotta be a real young person, boy. <laughs> say, yes. You say we we read the Archbishop's article. You know what is the IRO and and, and explain a little it's bit to really so like to understand what the Archbishop is saying. What's this IRO thing? The interreligious organization. Interreligious organization, and and that's all the major religions of Trinidad and Tobago that 
that are part of the IRO and that come together on, and they, they meet and they, they do many things together, but it, it builds the religious harmony of, of, our, of our people. It, it builds it. And, and so if, if, imagine, if, imagine if we can come together at a time like this and, and be conscious of fasting together, but at the same time, be conscious of breaking the fast together. Now, now the Islam and ourselves are Abrahamic traditions. Mm -hmm. We share so many things in common. But if we could reach beyond what divides us mm -hmm. and share on what we have in common, yes. I think that, that would be just so beautiful. I think God himself will smile. <laughs> yes, he God will. Because, it's, because it's, you see, in Trinidad and Tobago, many people have family who is Muslim. Yeah. Or many Muslims have family that's Catholic. And, and of all the religions. So let us celebrate this day by fasting together, encouraging our family, our friends to do so within their tradition. And, and let us, in our tradition, we fast, but at the end of the day, we, we can then break break that fast together and, and, and celebrate that this unity is possible in our country. And I think that that would do a lot of strength in the country also. And I think what, what is all, you know, um, if, if all our faiths get together and we celebrate that day together in terms of this incredible discipline of prayer and fasting, um, I think it would do wonders also for those people in authority to see, well, because all our people in authority, they're following one faith or another. And here yeah. is an example coming from your belief, your faith system yes. saying, yes. hear this, we are getting together to pray for the nation because yeah. we're in a boiling pot, because yeah. we're being challenged. Yeah. Yes. Follow us. Yeah, and, and, and we're hoping, you know, that, that many people in the nation will see that as a day of prayer and fasting. And, and imagine your friends coming together and you're praying for, for unity. You're praying for the land, you're praying for the world, you're praying for your families together. Wouldn't that be a beautiful thing? Yeah. Could you imagine all across Trinidad and Tobago and all the other little villages that, that families... Catholic and Muslim coming together, breaking fast together, and, and sharing a prayer and breaking fast at the same time. That I that I think would be would be just special. So and don't leave out the Hindu, the Baha'i, the spiritual Baptist, the Orisha, the, the, the Rastafarian, or the other Christians. Don't leave them out. We all have spiritual practice of fasting and prayer. So the, the national day of prayer and fasting is, is meant to unite and assist us all in finding a way to peace. It's, it's not meant to, to leave anybody out at all. Everybody, tooth by guy, everybody is brought into it. And, and if, if, we, if we see it that way with everybody being brought into it, then it really becomes a national day of unity. You know, I, 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 was, I was just looking at this, you know, on that beautiful day, um, you know, the, the 8th of April. That is actually, you know, the Friday before the Passion of Our Lord. Yes, yes. You know, really, a really important yes. day. It, and, and it is a Friday before the Holy Week starts. Correct. And the Holy Week is the most holy week for us. Yes. But it, it is also a time in the most holy month for the Muslims, it's a time of fasting for the Hindus. The Baha'is would have finished their, their fasting in March, but um, they will come back and, and have another day with us again. So it's a, it's a, a wonderful day in, in, that, in that respect. And, and again, it reminds us of how, how much we hold in common. With all that might be different, how much we hold in common. You say you talked about 
fasting as our tradition. Um, you know, the, so much of our Catholic culture and identity is wrapped into this. And, you know, I think it has fallen off. It has fallen off. And I, and, and I, and I appreciate this conversation that you're having with us to remind all Catholics and all Christians, because not only Catholics watch Shepherd's Corner, but to remind all Christians that this is part of our Christian culture and identity, to pray, to fast, and to give alms. And it, it least, is. You know, we need this now. We need this more than ever. And we have to strive to do all three during the Holy Period. Many of us begin, we have a great plan, but we quickly distracted, quickly deviate from the plan, and we get so consumed in everything else in our life mm -hmm. that we, we just lose focus on everything else. But hear this as a wake-up call. And, and whatever happened in Lent up until now, hear this as a wake-up call and, and plan that, that once a week from now till the end of Lent, plan to fast. Plan to fast. Fridays are traditionally, but you know, Wednesdays and Fridays are also traditional days. And another time in the church, Saturdays were, were also considered a fast day. So plan, plan to do prayer, fasting, and almsgiving during this, this, um, this time. Because it, it's, you know, we get so consumed by so many things. And, and, and our default is always our ease, our comfort, our self, our, our, our lifestyle. This is a, the spiritual wake up and the spiritual call to wake up, to smell the coffee, and to remember that God is God. And remember that as we as we doing the time of Lent, we, we're putting God first and we're making the sacrifice to do, to do that. And that's what is important for us. Is it easy? No, it's not easy. Does it, does it feel awkward? Of course it feels awkward. When you start off, of course, you're, 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 you're seeing that carrot cake running in front of your face, looking so gorgeous, and, and everything that is delightful, you, you okay, but, but that's a new opportunity to make a new sacrifice. When the temptations come, that's another opportunity to make an, another sacrifice and say, okay, Lord, I, I thank you for this opportunity. I choose to fast for you. I, I choose not to, to, to partake in anything right now. Is it because we as a nation have become so comfortable? As a nation, we've become so comfortable with because of our wealth, because of our, of our perceived advancements that, you know, we find it difficult to, I want to use these words, to to bow down to these critical disciplines which we need as human beings. You know, what's intriguing to me is a lot of the health chatter, now when I say chatter, is around fasting. They would chatter around intermittent fasting as good for your health and all kind of science behind, but we've been talking about this since ever Adam was in short pants, huh? Yeah. But, and and every, everyone who talks about spiritual discipline will talk about fasting, prayer fasting and almsgiving as a part of our spiritual discipline that we are, that we are to work with. And it is, it is part and parcel of how we give ourselves over to God. Today, Archbishop G is talking to us is having a conversation of about a time to pray and fast for the nation. The whole IRO, the Interreligious Organization, which means all of the religions of Trinidad and Tobago, they've gotten together and they have said, listen, Friday the 8th of April, we want everybody to hear this, Friday, mark this down, Friday the 8th of April is a day of prayer fasting for our nation. And All if right. there was any time we needed to pray and fast for our nation now. and for the world, is now. Is now. 
and and let's 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 do it you know as we pray and fast i'm asking you to do it intentionally that we choose discipline in in each of these areas and we commit to it during the season i'm asking you to do it intentionally each each one of the three is great on its own huh? prayer is great on its own fasting is great on its own arms giving is great on its own but you see you put the three together well now you have a powerhouse for conversion you have a powerhouse for intercession a powerhouse for deepening our relationship with god and and that's why the three come together but the 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 focus we're going to do on the eighth is is on prayer and fasting joining with our brothers and sisters of the islamic tradition and all the other faiths in trinidad and tobago as we we celebrate this together and as we we really have this time where where we we celebrate that we are in a country where we can do this together not all countries can eh? yeah you're, you're right not all countries can because if it's one thing this island nation this twin island nation of trinidad and tobago we've been blessed to to have so many cultures so many faiths and so on living side by side in harmony we, and we do live in harmony we do live in harmony um for the most part and, and you shared something which was which was which was um instructive for everybody i think in every family you know we have friends or family who are from the different faiths we can absolutely. all say that oh absolutely so we're not even asking to reach out far to find somebody yeah and if not then your workplace yeah but you know if not then your workplace i think of our amazing culture where we go by our our family you know when they're lighting their dears or we go by by, by yeah. them and, and we eat in their homes they come by us for christmas they, you know all the faiths more or less all the faiths celebrate christmas where all the faiths we, we we look at diwali as being a very special time all of the faiths you know vs naipaul in a, in a wonderful little book he had suff suffrage of elvira or suffrage in elvira talked about how democracy came to elvira and and in, in very early on when he was describing elvira he says you know elvira is a crazily mixed up little place the hindus revere the 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 christian feasts and holy days with great pomp and ceremony and the the christians revere the hindus and the muslim holy days and the muslims likewise for everyone else in fact when elvira was was finished with religious holidays they had very few straight days left <laughs> and yes we know that for true they always <laughs> talk about you know this elvira place we live in you know yeah. we have so many holidays very very few straight days left but that's what makes us who we are now the catechism of the catholic church number 1434 speaking about the many forms of penance in the spiritual life says the interior penance of the christian can be expressed in many and various ways scripture and the fathers insist above all on three forms fasting prayer and arms giving which express conversion in relation to oneself to god and to others is not beautiful there are many forms of of um of expressions that we can have for the spiritual life many ways that we could express our sacrifice and our offerings to god but they say you know these these the scriptures and the fathers insist above all not exclusively but above all on three forms fasting prayer and arms giving you know and, and and if you look at the three of them um you know singly and then you put them together you will see why prayer fasting and arms giving could only bring about healing because in prayer we are listening to god Correct. in fasting we are denying ourselves you know particular pleasures things that and we like our, yeah and putting others first. and in arms giving 
we are not saying only give to the Catholics or the Muslims or the Hindus, and we see to that anybody. Strong, to everybody. Everybody. But also, we, we are giving up some of that thing that we, we crave so much, mammon. Yeah. Yeah. And so each, each one is its own remedy for the malady of, of Western civilization. But together, they are powerhouse. Together, they are powerhouse. You talk, Alongside you, the radical yeah. purification brought about by baptism or martyrdom, the site as means of obtaining forgiveness for sins, efforts for reconciliation with one's neighbor, tears of repentance, concern for the salvation of one's neighbor, the intercession of the saints, and the practice of charity, which covers a multitude of sins. So this, this is talking about all the different forms that we have, the martyrdom, the, the um, reconciliation, the repentance, our concern for our neighbor. But, you know, when, when it comes to prayer, fasting, and arms giving, this covers a multitude of sins. And my brothers and sisters, we are here in this conversation, a time to prayer and fast for the nation with Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon. And, you know, why, why pray and fast for the nation? And, and we should know why pray and fast for the nation. Um, because, yes, you know, we need to do that because it covers a multitude of sins. And I think that we can all look back and say, yes, we are sinners. We are sinners. And I we don't find know. ourselves, yeah, we find ourselves in this situation because of that. My multitude is multitudinous. <laughs> so I have plenty covering the cover. St. Augustine says, fasting cleanses the soul, raises the mind, subjects one's will, subjects one's flesh to the spirit, renders the heart contrite and humble, scatters the cloud of concupiscence, quenches the fire of lust, and kindles the true light of charity. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Wow. Fasting, hear, hear it again, it cleanses the soul. You know, everybody want a detox? Yeah. Everybody yeah. Have, have their favorite way to do their detox for their body? Fasting cleanses the soul. It raises the mind. What is prayer? Prayer is raising the mind and the heart towards God. So it raises your mind. What else it does? It subjects one's will. Well, what does that mean? It, it means that it chastens the will and brings it under God. It subjects one's flesh to the, to the spirit. It, it, it allows the spirit to have the, the upper hand over the flesh, that the flesh no longer makes it call on us but, but, but the spirit actually becomes the filter through which everything is, is dealt with. It renders the heart contrite. Isn't that amazing? Because a contrite heart is really what is most beautiful for God. And, and also it, it renders the heart humble. It scatters the cloud of concubescence. Voila! Concubescence, and it's triple, is the, the, the experience that Adam and Eve had in their desire for what was wrong that caused them to rebel against God. It was pleasing to the eye. It was good for food, good for the flesh, and pleasing to the eye. So it, 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 it is this triple concubiscence, which is lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. And, and, and it's, it says it scatters the clouds of concubiscence. If ever you experience the clouds of concubiscence gathering around you, you know what scattering the cloud of concubiscence could do. And it quenches the fire of lust and kindles the true light of chastity. My word. St. Augustine, is, boy. St. Augustine, yeah. that is uh, what this is young people Augustine. Yeah, that, what, what the young people say, that's a corker. That is a coca. That if you ever wanted a, a coca, that's a coca. That is it. 
And, and here, here what, what St. Thomas Aquinas says, fasting is directed to two things, the deletion of sin and the raising of the mind to heavenly things. My word. Fasting is directed to two things. The first is cancellation of sin. To delete is to cancel. So the deletion or the cancellation of sin, and then the raising of the mind to heavenly things, which, which is really prayer. Prayer is the raising of the mind and heart to God. So if my mind has been raised to the heavenly things, then my mind has been raised to prayer. So fasting leads to the cancellation of my sins and to a deeper way of, of praying. I, I think that this is quite amazing in, in, in the tradition, that the tradition speaks so profoundly to us. Uh, at, at, you know, and in, in our time, what does St. John Chrysostom say? Fasting of the body is food for the soul. I love it. <laughs> Fasting for the body is food for the soul. The more the body fasts, the more the soul is fed, the healthier the soul is. Isn't that that's a beautiful inverse proportion there? You know, I, I, I think of the life of, of Gandhi. When India went into to, to madness and, and the violence became something that was just crazy. The violence between the Hindu and the Muslim was, was something that was just really crazy. And, and Gandhi went to fast. He went into a, he went into a Muslim neighborhood, went into a Muslim house, and, and in that house started to fast. The whole of India went its knees. And everybody stopped. And when, when they tried to encourage him, he said, tell me that it has stopped everywhere. And they had to show him it stopped everywhere. I think, um, I think it was Nehru who said, you know, if, if, if I fast, the only thing that will happen is I will die. <laughs> <laughs> you fast, the whole nation stops. And, and that's a great tradition of fasting in the, in the in, and, and look at what, what Gandhi did. He went in as a good Hindu into a Muslim house and fasted in a Muslim house, in a Muslim village. In a, in a township where the violence was real. And, and that's, that's the, 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 the imagination among our religious leaders. So John Christendom says, fasting of the body is food for the soul. You might be starving the body, but you're feeding that soul. You're feeding the soul something serious and something wonderful and beautiful. But you talked about the spiritual opposition that comes when we fast. And you say, don't underestimate it. Don't underestimate the spiritual opposition that comes when okay. we fast. That, now, yes, and that's why it's not a walk in the park. Huh? It's not a walk in the park. Now, you know, you're fasting you see nice cakes passing in front of your eye. You see the, the thing that you like to eat the most, you just start to crave it just so. Those are temptations. Name them for what they are. They're just temptations. That's all they are. They come, they go. You know, we, we have to understand that, that we live with, with temptation as, as a re reality, as part of our life. You try to do good, temptation to do bad comes your way. That, that's just how it works. And, and okay, but don't be alarmed by that. In fact, when you realize you're being tempted, smile. I say, what? I'm doing something good. You're doing something what? good. <laughs> I'm doing something good. Yes. I'm yes. doing something good. The, 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 the old idiot is, is, is trying to distract me. Oh, oh, this is, this is intriguing. You lost it already. You lost it already. 
So remember that Jesus was tempted in the desert. Satan sometimes intensifies the natural battle between the body and the spirit. And so in a time of fasting, he would do everything to, to get you to break that fast. But remember, resist the devil. Just resist the devil. Saint, Saint Ignatius of Loyola says the, the, the devil is like a, a spoiled child that it will make a whole lot of noise. And if you just don't give in to it, it will boil down like bachi. If you give in to it, woo, papa, you, you're gone now. And now to get it to boil down will, will be that much more difficult. And so the, the, the tactic up front is just to recognize temptation for what it is mm -hmm. and just don't give in to it. Smile and say, oh, that is the trick, all right, sweet one, and move along quick. So what do you want us to do? Um, what are your practices on the day of fasting? Well, I would like our churches open all day on the 8th of, of April. I'd really like them open all day. And where it is possible, I'd like the Blessed Sacrament exposed. Those, those who can please attend Mass at, if at all, at all, at all you can, please attend Mass. If you can at all, please visit the Blessed Sacrament to pray for the grace of conversion of heart in our nation and in our world. Just, just pray for conversion of heart. Pray for the grace of the Blessed Sacrament. And, and you know, make this a, a really, really special time. Remember, it's prayer fasting, arms giving. That's what we're doing. And that's why we're keeping the churches open. That's why we're keeping the, our, times, our times really nice and light. Prayer, fasting, and arms giving. That's, that's what we're doing. Those who can do without food from the night before until the evening, drinking only water, way to go. Way to go. So if you can, if you can do a, a, a full 24 hour fast, so the last meal you had was the evening before and you, you break the fast at, at, at six o'clock, 6.30 when, when sun is coming down and you exist on water all day, way to go. If you can do that, that that's, but if you need something a little more, just add a little bread in. If you require a little more because you're diabetic, and you, you, you don't want to throw your, your system out, that's okay. The, the, the actual traditional fast in the Catholic tradition is too small, is, is two very small portions of something like soup or a sandwich. So it's, it's called two collations and a meal. Two collations and a meal. And during the day, let us keep our minds and our hearts raised to God in everything that we're doing. Let's, let's, let's keep that focus on God. And let us pray with the scriptures and the prayer of the church, the church during that day. Remember also the Holy Rosary and the Divine Mercy Chaplet. And, and let's also add some acts of penance during that day. That we would we would really allow the day to be a truly penitent, pen, penitential and beautiful day for God. Let's remember, remember it as a very, very, very special day. And, you know, just, just check the Catholic news. You'll get the readings of the day for, for the yes. 8th of April. It's actually the first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 10 to 13. Um, and what a wonderful, you know, reading. Yes. And, yeah. and the gospel, the gospel is uh, John, John chapter 10, verses 31 to 42. So you'll get that in your Catholic news. Grab your Catholic news. Archbishop J has just said, hey, meditate on the readings of the day while you're praying and fasting. It, 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 is, it will be tremendous. It will be. And it is so... And, and all of us together are going to be in this. So, and remember, 
while you're praying, you're fasting, remember your brothers and sisters of the other faith traditions and be conscious that we're uniting in this. While you're praying and you're fasting, remember that we are, we are one people of La Trinity. Remember the world community and just pray. Pray for God's grace for us as individuals. Pray for God's grace for us as a nation. Pray for God's grace for us as a world community. And, and let us really enter into this time with, with as much love and grace and peace as we can, really focusing on, on what we are, that we are, we are the body of Christ. And, and we together, we together really raise our minds and our hearts to God in this time as a time of, of penance and a time of fasting and of prayer. The more when we fast, we feed our souls. We fast, we feed our souls. And so let, let their souls be really spiritually fed and, and nourished in, in, this, in this time. But, but all of your favorite devotions, bring it to the time of prayer. The Archbishop is asking all his parish priests, all the administrators, keep the churches open on April the 8th. If, by, if, if you can, let's have benediction. Let's have the Blessed Sacrament exposed throughout the day so that people can come and spend that Friday, you know, in prayer and fasting. You know, and I think that this will be really, really important. And I'm not sure, but I think even the, the schools, I mean, we know that our SE students will be on holidays. Yes. Let them come. I think our schools will also be on holidays at that time sure. when they're two weeks. So bring the children in, parents. Let them All get right. into this, this, this whole time of prayer and fasting so that they understand right. part of their whole, that we are doing this on behalf of the whole nation. On All the right. whole nation. Correct. Same Correct. Thing. And that's why, that's why we want everyone participating. Everyone. And if, if you're really ill and a full fast is impossible, that's okay. Give up something. You could give up meat that day. Fridays, we tend to, um, to, to have a, a non-meat day anyway. Um, so rather we could even give up meat and fish that day and, 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 and eat simply eat like, um, like Deacon Derek who's a vegetarian that day. <laughs> but for me, you know, I gotta give up something extra. <laughs> now you might have to eat me that day. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a thing. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. We'll identify parishes to facilitate communal prayers at different times during the day. So look out for that too, because different parishes will be, will be um, praying at different times during the day. So at any given time, there will be prayer offered and raised to God like holy incense. And so we, 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 have, to, we have to see that this is going to be a, 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 a relay of prayer throughout the archdiocese. With prayer raised constantly throughout throughout the day, details are going to follow. So look out for the details; they're going to they're going to come your way. And we're asking the children in the schools to participate. Schools should have special activities to focus the day, and an offering for the poor will be collected, either money or food for distribution. And in our schools and in our parishes, let's really be generous. Remember, it's prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Giving. Correct. And and hold on to your to your buckles because next week we're dealing with almsgiving. Eh? Next week we're looking at almsgiving, but for now we're talking about prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And 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 the generosity of our hearts is so important when it comes to, to really living, living this, this Christian life as a disciple of Jesus Christ. It's so important. And so I'm really asking you, please, let's just be generous with this. Let's be generous. 
And the, 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 the thing is, remember, we all be doing this as an entire nation together, as an entire nation together, you know, and, and it's all feats. So we know that we have parents looking on and just encourage your friends, encourage your family. Let everybody know about April the 8th, April the 8th, a time to pray and fast for the nation. Let's all get together and do this. You know, I, I think it's, it's absolutely critical. Now, what's your key am... message? I know you have a key message. Always. We're joining with our brothers and sisters of all faiths to pray fast and give arms on April the 8th. Let us help each other to keep this day sacred, holy, and beautiful for God. I, I, I want people to imagine what this is going to be. I don't think we've, we've, we've done a day of prayer and fasting before. We've done a day of, a day of prayer where we've, we've um, come together. We've done it several times in the last little while. We've come together and, and all the diff different religious traditions have, we've offered prayers in, in, in a, a time together. But this is a time of a, a day of prayer and fasting. There's a lot more intimate now. And really remember, remember what, we, what we're trying to do as we we asking you as Catholics, reach out to your Muslim friends or your family or your co-workers or whoever the relation is, but we all, we all know brothers and sisters of the Islamic tradition, reach out to one of them and, and, and let's arrange with them to break fast. And let's arrange that evening that we come together and we end our, our, our time of fasting together um, in, a, in a meal. But, but remember that as Catholics, we wouldn't eat meat on a Friday in Lent. Um, our Muslim brothers and sisters will, but we could eat fish at that time, or we could, we could go for a vegetarian meal. E either one we can do so as not to in inconvenience anybody else. But what a wonderful opportunity we have. What a wonderful opportunity. Let, let's really enter into this time and, and do something very, very special for God this year. What's your scripture reading? 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, if, 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 if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Wow. If, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I don't want anybody to forget. You, you may have forgotten that Archbishop J says, you're going to get details. You're going to get details. So you know where you're getting details. Get by your Catholic news. Go Absolutely. online, catholictt.org. Yep. Go on our Facebook pages. All our parishes have Facebook pages. You know, get online. Find out what is happening. You know, just like how you all go on YouTube and you turn on your different channels, you've got Trinity to tell you what is going to be happening because it's going to be there too, right? But let's all as a nation, it is a time to pray and fast for the nation because we're in this boiling pot, according to the Archbishop. Correct. 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 So let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love for us. And we pray, oh God, that this time in our nation may be a time of great grace, a time of great blessings. Give us all we need, Lord, to be faithful to you and to really open wide our hearts to all that you would ask of us. Give us a grace, Lord, to reach out to brothers and sisters and allow this unity to, to emerge through us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Okay, brothers and sisters, thank you so much. Remember, we are on Thursday night. We are again, um, we are broadcasting on Sundays after Mass 
join us. We are on Facebook. We are on YouTube. Look out for conversations with the Archbishop. God bless you all. Have a good one.